Welcome into the channel, everyone. If you're just tuning in now, you might never seen this before, but we've come to Precision Welding Academy a few times. I've always been the demonstrator here, but we've got a new demonstrator instructor today. This is the president of the campus here in Katy, Texas, and we're going to be doing some uphill and downhill MIG routes. I've seen this school since it started five years ago, and you started off with a bunch of Rebels. You still got a couple of the 285s around, but these Warriors are kind of coming in to replace them. This thing looks like Big heavy duty. duty. Yeah. The 285s are solid, but more, if I was going to suggest it, it'd be more for someone that's in their garage. But if you're welding 18 hours a day like we are, the Warriors go. I got the 285 in my garage and it handles, it's got more power than I need. Yeah. But for you training professional career welders on heavy, heavy metal mm. all day, every day, night and day, yeah. you got something to keep up with it now. Yep. So as far as settings, what settings are you going to use for these? these demos so i'm going to use around um 17.5 i could bump it up to that's 18. your voltage yeah that's my voltage when i'm doing downhill i'm going to keep it at 180 i'm just going to stay ahead of it even with my gap being how big it is if i overdo it with the wire it's going to build up in the front of the plate and not penetrate on the back so you're going to have a concave root it's not going to pass any inspection so we want to make sure that we keep that wire a little lower the biggest thing that we're going to do today is keep the voltage the same for Everything both plates we might adjust our wire, and then that's just for the root. When yeah, we get to the fill and cap, we might have adjust some things. Yeah, right? so anything that I do is I'm going to plus or minus just a little bit. But I honestly usually keep the voltage where I like it, and I just adjust the wire to match what I'm trying to do. So the voltage is going to stay the same. The only way to get that CJP, that complete joint penetration, we got to have a different fit. Yeah, so for your uphill, we're going to have a different fit than your downhill. With your downhill, you want very kind of thin penetration, very light penetration, about 16th is where you really want to be because you got product flowing through this. You don't want a whole lot of excessive reinforcement. So with this one, I'm going to open up that gap to about 532nd, sometimes 316th, but honestly 532nd is all you need. And I'm going to put a slight 16th on here. You can have a knife dead, but just to hold that puddle in a little bit, I'm going to put a 16th. What happens is with how low of a penetrating um, process this is, you want to break down these walls. If you put on too thick of a landing, you're going to have to turn up the voltage, turn up the heat, all that. If you're letting gravity kind of just drop that puddle in. You have too much of a land or too tight a gap. It's going to keep that penetration from penetrating through the back of that joint. Unlike uphill. Uphill where you can take a lot slower and let that puddle just push through and get that complete joint penetration. 3 30 second uh, landing. 332nd to a tight, tight 1 8 gap, and I'm just going to stay with the puddle and let it push through as I'm going up. When I'm going downhill, I'm going to stay ahead of that puddle and I'm going to watch for those sparks to hit that back. If I see the sparks on the back of that plate, then I know I'm getting penetration through the whole joint. Basically, in layman's terms, if you're going uphill, you need a thicker land, tighter gap. If you're going downhill, you need a wider gap and less of a land if yep. almost to none yeah to break down those edges and you can still get other things in between and still get the job oh, done. yeah i could open this gap up probably to a quarter you know why that penetration because you're a welder and i'm a welder i'm a professional welder well then weld it okay we're gonna weld it so as i light up i just kind of stay there and i watch that puddle kind of keyhole that that opening a little bit and I just stay in that puddle just to hopefully push it through. I don't want to stay too far into that puddle. I want to kind of get close to that leading edge, but I don't want that puddle to catch up on me too much. I just want to let that puddle do all the work and just push through. And I'm not oscillating a whole lot. The only time I'll oscillate and really you'll see me kind of whip this thing is if that keyhole starts opening up. But honestly, if you have that gap perfect, that landing perfect, and that voltage and wire speed, you should be able to just stay in that puddle and just watch it push in. Just taking it on up. I see my tack, so I know I'm about done. This is where everyone rushes. You wanna keep that same speed. And I'm all the way done, take it all the way up, done. I'm all done with the uphill MIG, kind of right in the middle, it started keyholing on me a little bit. 
but just jump out of that puddle just a little bit kind of ride that bevel face just till that middle kind of cools down then jump right into it you don't want to stay out on the edges too long just get right back into it because it'll fast freeze you will have lack of fusion now we got to repair with the uphill i stayed 90 the whole way just push that puddle through with that downhill now i'm going to kick that gun down a little bit about 15 degree and just stay right ahead of that puddle and i'm going to stay off to the side make sure i see that puddle the whole time and i'm gonna watch for those sparks to hit that back end all right so i got it lit up i'm gonna stay kind of right in front of it as soon as i see those sparks on the back i know i'm penetrating slight oscillation nothing crazy you just don't let that puddle do all the work you just got to make sure you're staying ahead of it i want to see it kind of keyhole a little bit but i don't want that puddle to catch up to me that root should be the same size that that profile of that root should be the same size as that gap opening any wider and you're going to have lack of fusion on that back or a concave root nice and easy we're getting down to the bottom i see that tack remember this is where people mess up because they start speeding up just like i did just like i did i started popping through but you got to be able to recover just looking at the back side we got complete joint penetration yeah. got a little snug here on the top but it looks fused mm. uh, the downhill to me I think the downhill looks better it's blended even a little bit more evenly on the toes it's a little flatter a little bit more consistent we get a lot of flack in the comment section if you think downhill MIG welding is not for pipe or plate yeah I've been right I've read that's all we do here in yeah. Houston yeah vessel shops it's all MIG and flux core anything over four inches and above Make and flux core. Flux core. Downhill uh, root. Yeah. Downhill MIG. Always. It's fused. You're just trying to make two pieces of metal one, people. That is it. Yeah. So what are you going to do to fill and cap these? I'm not going to take too much metal off. This is the first problem people have. With this downhill root, they'll smooth out all this root. And then when they start running that hot pass, they blow through and they wonder why. What voltage are you going to change anything on the voltage and wire yeah. feed? I'm going to be about 18.5. And then wire, I'm going to keep about the same, yeah. A little prep, a little cleaning, but yeah. let's boogity boogity. I'm just going to wire wheel this and go. This is my uphill hot pass. The biggest thing with the hot pass is everyone weaves the hell out of it. You just want to stay on them toes. You want to blend in that toe. If that toe of that root does not blend in, it's going to break all day. The biggest thing is just not chilling in that middle. Straight through that middle, pause on them toes. Straight through the middle, pause on them toes. Welding is all about where you direct that heat. I'm seeing the ending, keep the same speed. Downhill, angle's gonna change a little bit. If I carry too much metal, I'm gonna get a lack of fusion on them toes. All right, so I finished up a fill and another fill on the downhill. One thing that I noticed is as I'm running these, it, the puddle seems to be fighting a little bit. Uphill, not too much, but downhill, a little bit on penetrating. I'm gonna bump up that heat a little bit to like 19, and then I'm bump up that wire, because now I have to match it. I'm gonna stringer this out uphill all the way. Uphill's gonna build up a lot more. You're going up, gravity's gonna fight you. It's gonna build up that puddle more. 
So it's going to take less pass to the fill. Downhill is going to be a lot flatter process and you're going to have to be uh, putting a lot more uh, beads to fill it up and then you're going to cap it. All right, let's go. Well, dude, they're both flushed out. Got a little bit more of a crown on that one. This one's a little flatter, huh? Yeah, I honestly could flatten that down a little bit. I keep going back and forth because I'm like, can I, I can cap it, you but don't want to grind. Yeah, but no, I don't want to grind. <laughs> but I can cap it, but will it crown more? This one, I'll cap it pretty quick. I'm gonna probably do a three bead, three bead cap for this, two bead for this one. Don't matter what you put in there, what you put on top of it, as long as it's two pieces of metal into Maybe. one. Over the base metal, rooted, penetrated. And we are gonna cut these guys and root and bend cap yep. both of them. I can't wait. <laughs> Makes me nervous. So as I cap this, I'm just barely watching that puddle roll over that edge. You don't need to go crazy outside that beveled edge. Too much outside that edge, you're just kinda wasting material. While that plate is hot, while that bead's hot, hit it real hard on them toe lines. And if you got a slight bit of undercut, sometimes it'll blend it on in, hit them toes decently hard, and then hit that, uh, hit that profile. So let's weld that uphill. I haven't done an uphill cap in forever, so I'm gonna concentrate a little bit harder on this one and make sure I keep that straight line. If I go right over that edge, and I know that I hit that same mark each time, it should stay straight. I pretty much just want to go travel through the middle, hit the toes, travel through the middle, hit the toes, because if I stay any longer in that middle, it's going to crown on me. I already had kind of a high profile going into this for the flush out. So you kind of got to adjust. If you are going to be stubborn like I was and not use a grind tool to flatten it down, you got to be able to control that puddle to get the profile that you want. Yeah, I mean, and you'll see if, as, as same, same thing we're talking about the whole middle thing. You go and hit this side. If you watch my finger, you go hit that side once, you go hit that side once, you've crossed the middle twice. Yeah. The middle's going to take care of itself every time. Oh, yeah. So you got them capped out. Now the telltale thing that we got to figure out is, are they sh the same strength? At least with a bend test. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, we'll go ahead and cut out. your coupons and Me we'll cut get a bit. Yeah. What? I've been welding, you cut them. No, today I was coming to film you nope, work. Nope, 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 I'm sweaty. I got to go back in the office. Where's my white, where's my white hard hat? This one's going to be the cap uphill that you told me. You nervous? A little bit. Yeah, you're looking at it like you're uh, if it was If it was stick, if it was pig, wouldn't even see me sweat. I would be inside sleeping. I mean, short circuit MIG is not the best process for heavy plates. No. But can you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Should you? You can. Yeah. It's, it's not a, it's, there's procedures out there for these tests. Uphill MIG cap right there. It wasn't the prettiest, but guess what? It penetrated. We got, we got the side of the cap there and the other side over here. We got nice prep, rounded edges on that bin sample. Uh, no openings. Uphill root. I'm not worried about the root. 
But now I feel like I should be. I think you should be. There's your uphill route. So check it out. You can even see that route clear as day. The edge of it there, the edge of it here. No openings. This is our uphill coupons. The uphill route, uphill cap. Mm. Everyone says you can't weld downhill. You're gonna start with the cap? I'm gonna start with the cap because I feel the route I'm pretty confident on. Downhill cap. Short circuit. What is it? Half inch plate? Half inch plate. Half inch plate. So I'm qualified for up to an inch on this. So this now this spin test for him. Uphill MIG, he's qualified for a MIG all the way out, inch thick. Inch thick. I saw a little opening, I think. I see a little opening over here on the sidewall. I think it could have been the prep. Definitely prep. So we got the downhill cap. That's the one toe there. And that's the other toe. Just on the inside, we got two very small openings close to just under a 16th, maybe a 32nd on the smaller one. When it comes to D11, we're well within tolerance of that. So that's your downhill cap. Stamp my search. Downhill mid roof. Uh oh. It's all right. <laughs> I thought it broke the. <laughs> I thought it was just ri ripping your weld. Yeah. No, yeah, there we got the root right there. No openings, clean as can be. Uphill, downhill, short circuit MIG, half inch plate. Same voltages for yeah. both both of these tests yeah all bent out because a professional did it professional and now you can be a professional too we'll see you on the next one all right no, no, do it again thank you <laughs> together mic check one two one two awesome wishes he had a beard like this oh that's just your piece of Bender. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs>